What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're going to be looking at what I think could be an end game espresso machine for under $1,500. The Breville Dual Boiler. I know, I know, you're gonna, you're sitting there going, Breville dual boiler, that's like a kitschy kitchen type of thing, right? That's, that's not a very good machine. It's, it's plasticky, it's, it's, blah, 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 blah. well, I got news for you. It's incredible and I'm gonna talk about why during this video, but before that, as you can see with my shirt, I don't work for Breville, but I am, um, I do things for them, so I do classes for them online. I get some of their equipment for free. This one was not part of that deal. I got this years ago, uh, this dual boiler. But I wanted to disclose that, but I promise you it's not affecting my thoughts on this because I decided to work with Breville uh, based off of the efficacy of specifically this machine. I absolutely love it, and what I'm about to say about it, I think will make you love it as well. All right, so let's just jump into it. There are some incredible things about this machine that we should cover. The first big thing is this machine will heat up to 205 degrees in as little as six minutes and 44 seconds. That's mind boggling. Most machines cannot do that. That's super fast heat up for a dual boiler. So when I say dual boiler, there's literally two boilers inside, one feeding to the group head, one feeding to the steam wand. This means you can pull your espresso and steam your milk, same time, all right? So you don't have that lag, so your creme is not dissipating before you pour for good latte art or vice versa. Your foam's not thickening up as you're pulling your espresso. You're able to do them at the same time, all right? The other thing is that this is, um, uh, this one has the pressure that reads at the group head as opposed to at the pump, which there's a lot of back and forth on whether or not this is beneficial or not, but for those of you who have an opinion on that, this is a very rare thing for cheap home express machines to have is that pump uh, reading at the group head, all right? And then there are a lot of incredible modifications you can do to this, as I've mentioned earlier, you know, just a minute ago in this video. And I'm gonna go over a couple of those right now. The first and the biggest one that most people are observing is what's called the Slayer modification. Now, Slayer is known for their patented uh, needle valve um, uh, the P PID needle valve, where they are able to uh, control restrict flow rate. So you're able to do flow profiling with the Slayer machine. A lot of people think it's pressure profiling, it's really flow profiling, but you're able to make a simple modification on this machine here to create a similar effect, where you have the needle valve you're controlling from the hot water knob, and you're connecting it to the, to the solenoid valve, which feeds into the group head, and you are able to control effectively the flow rate of water coming out over your espresso puck. Now, what this allows you to do is have a lot more control over your extraction, and it really helps you push your extraction on lighter roasted coffees. Now, something I went over in my recent flare video, linked right there, is that as you're brewing your coffee, and it's at nine bars the whole way, you're gonna get an increasing flow rate the whole time, which is going to hurt, which is going to, I was gonna say harm and hurt. It's gonna harm, hurt, hurt your, uh, your, your final shot of espresso if you keep letting that flow rate go up. So as the pressure continues, the flow rate's gonna to continue to go up in trajectory, and what that, can, uh, what that can introduce is more and more channels at the end. So in my flare video, I showed how you can feel the puck eroding and you can let off on pressure. And then I made the comment uh, about John Buckman's um, quote saying, you know, nine bar espresso machines are like the worst thing to have happened in the history of espresso. Well, with flow profiling, you can do the same thing we did with that lever, which is you can slow up the flow so that you can maintain a, a, a lower pressure as the shot goes. So what you'll see on the, need, on, the, on the pressure gauge is you'll see that needle go all the way up to nine bars and then it'll start slowly coming down as opposed to staying at nine bars like every other machine for the most part will do. Now, why am I saying this is an end game? Well, because of the modification like that Slayer one and some others I'll go over later in the video, you are able to rival those $3,000, $4,000 machines that sell themselves based off of their flow profiling ability. You're able to control the milliliters per second based off of how you're rotating this knob. Now, this idea of the Slayer modification came from that Home Barista website. I'll link below in the caption some of the early discussions about it to give credit to where credit is due. And when I say it's a simple modification, I mean simple. You take the top off this machine and you literally just reroute three tubes inside. Three. You take the, there's a little pin covering the, the three different tubes. 
You pull the pin out with some needle nose pliers, you unplug, and you plug in another spot. That one you unplug, plug in another. The third one you unplug, plug in another. And the three tubes are the ones connected to the hot water spigot, the hot water nap valve, and the solenoid, okay? So you just do a little swap -a but just know that you're taking essentially the control from the hot water valve, and you are controlling the flow of the water coming out of the group head. Now, yes, that does mean once you do this modification, you can no longer use the hot water spigot. But many people say using a tea kettle to make your Americanos is gonna be even better anyway, because you can control more particularly your water content there. For all intents and purposes, you, you don't need the hot water spigot. You can use hot water from flushing the group, or you can use a tea kettle um, or anything of the like. So, I never use the hot water spigot anyway. You just have to seal it with some silicone. I took a, a little um, cup cover, cut a circle out, jammed it into my hot water spigot, good to go. But yeah, the modification is 100% reversible, super easy. So I'm gonna show, show, show some, I'm gonna show some shots in a second. I'm gonna show some shots in a second on how that works, uh, but I wanna continue on with these modifications that you can do. One that I absolutely adore is the drip tray modification to make a, an Akaya Lunar flush into the scale, flush into the drip tray. So all you do with this is you pluck out, and uh, I'll put down below, um, someone has compiled pictures of how to do this easily, but essentially you pull out that little uh, floating bobber thing that says, you know, um, uh, dump me or whatever. It sounds like a weird relationship, dump me. Um, you take that little thing out, and then you take a Dremel tool, and you cut, and you sand, so it doesn't, it's not jagged. And when I put it in, that little space is actually level. And so you get accurate readings with the Akaya flush in your scale, I mean, flush in your tray. So you can take out the vibratory pump in here and put in a rotary pump, which also allows you to plumb in your uh, espresso machine to a five gallon uh, bucket of water, or about five gallon uh, container of water. So you don't have to keep switching out the water um, consistently. You can also change some of the things in here to brass, like a brass pump, ne uh, brass neck pump and um, OPV. And this can help dampen some of the noise. It can help lessen some of the noise of it. And there are a slew of other modifications you can perform. Like I just saw someone the other day um, in a Discord I'm in, who made a switch that I think he's uh, putting right here behind the hot water knob that allows him to cut off the pump mid shot so that he can uh, emulate those blooming espresso profiles that Scott Rayo made famous and which is uh, in, uh, uploaded to the decent uh, the decent espresso machine. So you can uh, you can even find a modification to shut off that valve. And these are all for pennies on the dollar. Small little pieces of equipment you need to buy in order to do it. And this machine's only fifteen hundred dollars. So. Those are the modifications, uh, at least the ones that I know of that I think are incredible and uh, some of them I have implemented myself. There are obviously a lot of other ones that you can do. On top of all of this, the community of Breville dual boiler owners is, has an incredible wealth of information online from home baristas to different discords. So if you have any troubles, it's a simple Google search away and you're gonna find how to fix this, how to make it better, how to do these modifications and how people are using it to do say turbo shots or these blooming espresso shots or these other profiles you hear from decent espresso users. You're able to do a lot of them on here because of the flow control. You also have uh, one, one upside I forgot to mention is you can do 100 milliliter and above shots with great temperature stability. There are a lot of people who have tested this out and it maintains its temperature incredibly well. Everything is super easy to change around. You have an auto flush that is programmed in here. So you don't have to sit here and go 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Um, yeah, and the temperature you can change with just the two buttons right here. So there's a lot of incredible things about this machine. I know that it's a people see Breville as like a kitchen appliance type brand, but it actually has an incredible lifespan. I've had this for five years with only changing gaskets. It's been an incredible experience for me. I saw someone just posting about their eight-year-old machine in one of these groups. And like I said, this is such a, a ubiquitous machine that there are people, brilliant people, these engineers type minds that are all around the country, all around the world, who are constantly finding new modifications for this machine and constantly finding easy ways to repair and uploading videos on how to do so. So that was a ton of information, I know, but let's go ahead and look at what these shots uh, appear to be like. So I know there are a lot of you who are like, I just want my nine bar shot. Well, this also does a great job of nine bar shots. You can also change the OPV to be at eight bars or six bars or whatever you like. Uh, or you can do the modification itself. All of them take 30 or less minutes to do. Super simple modifications. Now what I've been uh, enjoying, and I've alluded to this in, a, in an earlier video with the Flare 58, is attaching 
the Smart Espresso Profiler to my Akaya Scale. So this app, remember? So I'm able to control, using this, this needle valve and the hot water knob, I'm able to control the flow rate of the water coming out of the group head, and I can see what the flow rate onto the scale is, okay? So on here, you're able to control that, and you can see it on the scale. Now, of course, to be able to know how far to go for certain flow rates, you'll need to put a cup under here without the portafilter, and you'll need to um, measure the flow rate using the scale, right? So you can see what the flow rate is, and you can make marks on here. I have a little uh, adhesive measuring tape on here with an arrow of where it's fully closed. And you can do it based off of millimeters for how much uh, flow you're wanting in the shot of espresso. So you can figure that out, make your markings on here, and then you know roughly where to go for certain milliliters per second. And then you're essentially just manipulating grind size in order to make different profiles, okay? How many machines can do that? So as I was saying about the heat stability, the reason that this is so incredible at uh, heat stability is because it is saturated electronically at the group, all right? So it's better than E61s at maintaining that temperature stability, and it's better than a lot of machines way above its pay grade. It does an incredible job at maintaining that heat. And the fact it can heat up to 205 in six minutes and 44 seconds is just it's shockingly incredible. Uh, you can also do full shots in your pre-infusion mode. If you just hold down the shot button, it's gonna stay in pre-infusion. So you can do lower pressured shots without doing any modification. So there's just a lot of variability to this machine. I'm obviously doing the modification. I have my coffee ground and now I'm going to WDT. If you don't know what that means, it's Weiss Distribution Technique. Check out, check out that video that I just put right above me. There's a little line with words. You click it, you'll see what this means. Anyway, from above, I'm going to WDT the way I do in that video. All right, so I start deep and I circle. I do little circles in a circle until I'm at the very top. Then I shove this in thing of rice to keep clean, and so I don't poke my fingers. And I'm gonna take a .22, and I'm just doing small grooming on the top. Boom. All right, now I'm taking the collar off, doing a little love tap, and then I'm gonna tamp with my Decent version three calibrated tamper. All right, so I've got this. I've got my Smart Espresso Profiler app open and ready. This is going to allow me to read the flow rate of the espresso hitting the cup on the scale, and I'm able to control the flow rate of the water coming out using the hot water knob, which is controlling that needle valve, allowing me to shut it or open it. Now the difference is very minute, it's very small, so you have to make small little, little uh, move motions, but um, yeah, it gives us that control. So let's get the cup ready, let's tear the scale, let's start the Smart Espresso Profiler, turn it on, and I'm gonna slowly open the valve just a smidge so water starts to sprinkle out. There we go. All right, so I've got it coming out just very slowly. We're at one bar. And it's going to, obviously, the pressure will raise even though I'm not opening the valve much because that water that's coming out is building pressure against the puck. So we're not pressure profiling, we're flow profiling. I have it up at eight and a half bars at 28 seconds, all right? And now I'm gonna slow it down. I'm gonna slowly start to shut it off so it goes down in pressure. As that puck is eroding, I'm lessening the amount of water going over it. I'm down to seven bars at 40 seconds. All right, I'm down to six, down to five, down to three. I wanna keep it at three. So I'm gonna kinda of toggle it right here until I hit 55 grams of coffee. And I'm at three and now I'm at 55 and I shut it off all the way and stop it. And that was 55.3. Boom, and we stopped that. All right, I've got the uh, flow reading, so that was just a blip, I didn't tear the scale. So you've got the flow reading here. I brought it up to about 1.7 and then brought it down to 1.5 uh, grams per second and then psh, shot it down at the end, really de-escalated it. Imagine if we had nine bar consistently, so let's toggle back to, well I guess this doesn't uh, do pressure, but essentially what's going on is you have the pressure hitting nine right about here and if, the nine, if it stayed nine bars the whole way, imagine what would have happened to this line. It would keep increasing and increasing and increasing. So what you would have is essentially an uncontrollable flow rate. But with this modification, you're able to flow profile. You are able to slow the amount or, or lessen the amount of water coming out, or you can increase it based off of blocking or opening it completely. So it's little minute movements, little small movements. You can make markings as I have here. You might be able to see from that camera right there. And I have adhesive ruling tape, uh, measuring tape around the knob, all right? 
So you have a lot of different options as far as what you can do with this machine. This is my favorite is having this drip tray mod and having the Slayer mod. I've been considering doing that little switch mod to turn off the pump so I can do a blooming espresso, uh, which is insane that you can even consider doing that with this machine. So is it an end game machine? Depending on your budget, I think it could be. Um, to be completely honest, my favorite machine made right now is the Decent Espresso machine, but it's because you can control almost every variable that you can consider. So if you're looking at a sub $3,000 budget, I 100% recommend this over every other machine that I've used. Have I used all of them? No. But I absolutely love this group head. I understand that the E61s can look a lot better, but that's just aesthetics. This has better temperature stability because of that saturation with the electronics near the group. You have pressure reading at the puck as opposed to inside at the pump. Uh, it, it, it just all together. And even without the modifications, as I said, you can pull the whole shot with pre-infusion, which is going to give you a low pressure shot. Uh, and one thing I do need to include is this is the 920 XL. Okay, and you can tell the difference between the 900 XL and the 920 XL, which is a newer model. And I say newer, it's been a few years, but uh, you can tell by and from the side view, you'll see this, the D scale access right here. If your machine has that, you have the 920. If it doesn't, you do not. And from what I hear, Breville only really accepts the 920 XLs to, be, uh, to have repairs done on them. So do know that. Uh, but if you have this machine, Incredible. You're going to make some fantastic espresso. You're going to have a lot of fun. And again, you can use this app to, to map out your flow rate. You can do turbo shots, which are, you know, really fast shots. So like, you know, 15 in, 35, 40 out in 20 seconds. You can do what's called spro overs, which is going to allow you to do like, you know, t a one to 10 ratio in 50 seconds uh, with a really coarse ground. Uh, you know, with the inception of that arguably being Matt Perger's uh, routine where he pulled essentially drip coffee out of the espresso machine. You can do those with this using this modification. Uh, and like I said, you can do full out just pre-infusion shots. You can change your pre-infusion, which is an incredible thing for <laughs> such a cheap machine. And at $1,500, dual boiler, two boilers in there, that's solid. So, this has obviously a resounding stamp of approval from me. I know that there are conflicting reviews on it and you may have had a bad experience with Breville and that I can't speak to. I've only had positive experiences with the machines that I've had. I have never had one that I needed to send back. I've been lucky. I understand that there are other people who come with one defective. I hope that you've been able to get help with that. I appreciate you all watching this video. Uh, please let me know below you know, how much you despise me for recommending uh, a plastic uh, cased machine. I, I love, I love that. Um, it's incredible getting you know, negative comments. It's my favorite thing. So uh, let me hear it, uh, but it's not gonna change my opinion on this machine. And uh, you know, if you're a BDB owner that has done these modifications and you love it, you know, show, show some love below. Let me know what you'd like to see in a future video on this because I'm sure I'll do a lot of dual boiler uh, types of shots uh, on these. Today I did an undialed in espresso and it tastes fantastic. I'm gonna take another sip. And maybe if a lot of people show interest, I'll actually do the modification on a video if you have one and you want to mod it out. Uh, yeah, so as I said at the beginning of the video, please, you know, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, you know, like the video, leave some comments. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching and look out for the next video because it's going to be a little bit of pew, 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 latte. Art. We're going to look at the three styles of Rosettas. All right, that's enough of Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot art will be up next. Peace. I'm going to down this espresso. All right, love y'all, bye.